Hello, my name is Chris Akakis, and I'm here to tell you that that young fellow over there, A backslash B, is just not good enough for you. So, um, where, where does this come from? So, what it, first of all, what is A backslash B? You know, you write down a little not, uh, linear system here, some jiggy like this, you remember from your undergrad, and what you want to do is you want to solve for X and Y. And so, in Julia, what you do is you write down the matrix of coefficients, you write down the vector of the solution, you type in A backslash B, and ta-da, it gives you X and Y. So therefore, you know, oh, hey, this solves that problem, right? That's all you ever needed in life. Um, the point of this talk is to tell you that you should never take math advice from a fourth grader. Stan is incorrect. That's not all you needed. So uh, why do I care so much about linear systems? Like, let's take a step back here. Um, well, they kind of show up everywhere. So for example, you know, if you go to a YouTube video that's like linear regression, clearly explained. Uh, the clear explanation is it's just a linear solve, bro. Um, you know, the next thing is like, oh, what about Newton's method? You know, you're trying to solve equations for I implicit equations for where they equal zero. Um, the main step inside of there is just a linear solve. So look, Yingbo Ma, there's a linear solve in here. Uh, what about, you know, if you want to take data and automatically spit out the equations that generated this data, right? You know, automatically discover physics, uh, you know, all this cool AI stuff. Oh, hey, look, this is just a linear solve right here. Um, so, okay, they just show up everywhere. Everything's a linear solve. Everything, everything, everything is doing linear solves. So you just do A backslash B and it solves the linear system, but wait, is there more one than one algorithm for solving a linear system? And uh, of course, there's a whole field called numerical linear algebra that has looked into this as one of its main problems. So yes, there have always been uh, many algorithms for this, says Mr. Gunny Guy, but it's kind of just hidden from you with A backslash B. Um, and that's, that's, that, that's, that must tell you that may, hey, maybe there's a better way to do this. Um, so I'll start by saying that A backslash B is pretty smart. Uh, what I'm showing here is the algorithm that is used inside of it for MATLAB, which, you know, Julia, SciPy, et cetera, every language then uh, does something quite similar. It does check like, oh, is this a square matrix? If it isn't, then use QR factorization. Otherwise, you use LU factorization and so many different variants, right? So A backslash B is pretty smart. It's not one algorithm. It's a poly algorithm doing many different things. But that's and that said, you know, it will specialize in some cases. So it has a different poly algorithm from when uh, from when you have a sparse matrix. But there is a lot of issues with it, right? So why all the hoopla about a backslash b? Well, three things: one, it's not efficient; two, it's not general enough; and three, it's not an interface. So let me let me go into these three points. Uh, so first of all, a backslash b is not efficient because it's actually, it actually turns out that there's a lot of computational details about how you can implement something as simple as LU factorizations. So here I'm showing you a difference between the package recursive factorization.jl, which is a pure Julia implementation of LU factorizations, and here is a backslash b's default with open blahs. And so, hey, using recursive factorization.jl is two times faster. So you know, here, you know, just right off the bat, you know, maybe you want to use MKA or different, you know, there are many different algorithms for doing this and they scale differently on different CPUs. So you might want to be able to change which algorithm you're actually using because if you're doing this all the time and it's your main compute uh, for a lot of these problems, you, th this performance, you know, 2x can matter. Um, also, you know, you have to follow the rules. You're a Julia programmer, and I just told you a backslash b is slower than something else. So therefore, by the unwritten rules of Julia, you have to use the faster one. Um, the other thing is that, you know, if you just a backslash b, well, you know, you don't actually get an efficient algorithm all the time. So here, for example, you know, a backslash b1, and then you do a backslash b2. Aha, if you're going to use the same a here, you actually want to factorize first, and then you want to use that prefactorized form. So, you know, there's there's details then for how do you actually do this effectively. Um, and, oh, hey, actually, instead of backslash, you might want to use LDIV, so that way you reduce allocations. But, oh, actually, actually, if you are using LDIV, you still get an allocation because it has to build the workspace, um, which is not something that base.linearalgebra gives you 
access to. So there's a different package, fastlawpackinterface.jl, which has a lower level interface so that way you can define this workspace and avoid that allocation. So ha, if you really want more, you know, even LDIV and, and L, you know, even all the bang operations doesn't get you to no allocations. But, you know, even, especially, you know, when you get into the sparse case, well, in the sparse case, there's also something called the symbolic factorization. And if you change A, you can, you might need to do a new factorization, but you don't need to do a new symbolic factorization if the sparsity pattern is the same. And okay, I can rant on this forever. You know, so, so just using A backslash B is usually not the most efficient thing to do. There's a lot of other details that you actually need to know about if you want to make this as efficient as possible. Um, and backslash does not let you have all those options. Um, also, I mean, even when you get to these, you know, sparse matrices, there's also completely different algorithms. So for example, uh, for sparse matrices, there's UMF pack and KLU, which are two of many options. And one of them is faster when you have sparsity patterns that are more regular, like a PDE discretization. One of them is faster when you have sparsity patterns that are more random, like in circuit simulations. And, uh, Yay, I guess you have to now learn more obscure packages for all the different combinations of ways that you can factorize. And it can make a difference of like 5x or something. It's not a small detail. So if this is your largest computation, you should be caring about all these minor little weird packages around for just this one little backslash operation. But that's not even just that, right? So that's just efficiency details that you're, you know, you're already doing the slow thing, even if you most, even most likely, even when you thought that you were doing the fast thing. Um, but here, it's all, you also have the issue of generality, right? So um, there's other ways to solve linear systems like GM res. Uh, these, these, uh, new, uh, these kind of Krylov methods, they require that you pass a tolerance, uh, things like max iterations, be able to turn on logging, preconditioners, and backslash doesn't even have a way to pass uh, keyword arguments. So um, backslash is just not a general form that can even describe some of the linear solvers that you might need for bigger applications. And uh, the last but not least, A backslash B is not an interface. So what do I mean by that? So let's, let's say you actually want to implement a code in a package and make it so that way you can do you know, linear solves fast because that's the biggest computation in, in a program like in Noon's method. So you care about this. And so you just watch this part of the talk and you say, okay, you know, I, I implemented a Newton's method, here it is. Um, but, oh, you know, you just watched the talk, so you know, hey, change this to recursive factorization, and now you made things two times faster, and you think that you did a good job. But, you know, but what about sparsity, and now what about Krylov subspace methods? So, okay, so now you try to make me happy, and you try to say, okay, you know, I have an option for sparsity, I have an option for blahs, and da 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 And, uh, you know, once you get to here, you go on discourse, and you, you look at all the people who've just tried your package, and they say, hey, um, your option for your iterative solver is iterative solvers.jl, and that one doesn't support GPUs. So please make a new branch in here for cryolov.jl. And oh yeah, can you do something for GPU offloading? And uh, oh, because you're using this uh, recursive factorization LU directly, you no longer have uh, differentiability for, for this main case. So can you please add uh, automatic differentiation support on top of this? And um, oh, you forgot pet C. So can you can you give a can you add a distributed branch? And um, oh, you you know if you do quasi Newton, now you want to reuse the factorizations in this case, and you can see where this is going, right? So so the real issue is if you want to actually handle a backslash b effectively inside of a package, you have uh, two options. Um, so you either have to you know so the moral story here is uh, you know it's just. Backslash is not a good interface to build things off of because you have to handle a lot of details. So you either have to just you know take that as is and 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 uh, and, and just handle every detail, or you can just try to not please everyone on the internet and just say this is how it is. These are the options I have, and go home. Um, both are reasonable options. And uh, what I want to talk, tell you is that uh, linear solve is the solution to how you can handle this complexity with all the linear solver choices. So linear solve.jl is a solution to please everyone on the internet who has a backslash b problems. Um, and basically, the default algorithm is smarter than you. Uh, so let's, since it's written in SciML, we can just call it AI. So that way, it's cool now. You you just say, hey, here's my linear problem. Solve it, and it gives you out the solution. And uh, you know, if you if, if you don't give an algorithm, then it's going to try to find out which one it will want to use, which can include all sorts of packages throughout Julia, including recursive factorization and KLU and all these bits. 
Um, if you give it an algorithm, so you just add these characters here, then suddenly it's using that algorithm. Um, so you can switch between you know tens of packages fairly easily, and all of the options for tolerances and such are available. Uh, it tries to wrap it all. We, we have about uh, 10 packages in there now, and we're adding more like Pet C, Magma, Elemental, QSolver RF, all these things that you've probably never heard of, but will be very good to just be able to change five characters and try this in a package. Um, and one of the key details here is that we made the interfaces uniform. So one detail that you might not have known about is that you know the three different iterative solver packages in Julia, they actually have different interfaces for preconditioners. One requires the inverse definition of another. And so if you define a preconditioner for one of these packages, it doesn't work with the other one. We fix that, so we just to say this is how we define preconditioners for linear solve, and we invert it internally inside of the wrapper because that's this is nonsense. You, sh uh, you you shouldn't have to deal with this downstream in a Newton package, right? That's just th this is an external detail from that uh, from writing a Newton solver. Um, the other thing is that there's each of these packages can have different names for arguments. You know, tall versus atall versus abstall. And linear solve.jl has a common interface over it that says this is how we define things, and we do rewriting inside of the wrapper. That is because we 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 want to make sure that there's one interface to, to rule them all. Um, one one other detail in here is that linear solve.jl has a caching interface. So when you do a solve and you say, hey, I want to, you know, here I can I can init a solve and I can solve once with this this cache, but then I say now change B and solve again. Um, and what this will do is it'll say, hey, you know, for this method, the optimal thing to do is to keep the factorization. So I will keep the factorization and resolve, uh, just reback solve. And now um, if I change A, it can recognize like, hey, if this was a sparse matrix, then I should keep the symbolic factorization if the sparsity patterns are the same. Basically, it's saying, you know, tell me what to do, uh, but not how to do it. You know, tell me that you want to change B, tell me that you want to change A, and I will know from the algorithm how to most effectively do that and get all the optimality out. I don't think that most users have to know the details about what it's actually doing here to really understand that, yes, you want to be doing these optimizations. Um, so what does it actually look like in practice? So here's a giant ODE definition that's in that's in this tutorial here. And differential equations.jl uses linear solve.jl internally, which means that the, the interface is you just give it a linear solve algorithm. So here, you know, it's like, oh, solve this ODE with this algorithm. And, you know, it does something, right? And it uses a default. But here you can just say lin solve equals anything from, uh, from linear solve.jl. And boom, it's now changing the algorithm of Diffie-Q to be using different linear solvers. And so just by using linear solve inside of differential equations.jl, differential equations.jl now supports you know nine different packages for linear solvers and all the pros and cons between them uh, this is nice because it also supports the the whole preconditioner interface just by taking in linear solvers that allow for that have you know the use the linear solve.jl preconditioner interface and so then you have access to all sorts of acceleration operations which here it gives you like about a 4x acceleration by the time you choose the right ODE solver and linear solver so I mean, basically what this means though is that, you know, there's a lot of details for solving linear systems efficiently. And, you know, if you can either ignore that and have something slow, but we don't do that in Julia. We don't talk about that, Bruno. Um, but we, the other thing that you can do is you can write this entire huge thing for how to handle all the different choices of linear solvers. But um, if you just take that out and make that into a package that does that and reuse that everywhere else, that package is linear solve.jl. And so thank you very much. Hopefully that gives you an, an insight into one of the SIML libraries that you might not have heard about before. There's many others, some that you know about, like DiviQ Flux and Differential Equations. There's many others that you might not have heard about, like you know Exponential Utilities. So check out the hundreds of libraries. They all have a story similar to this one. Thank you very much.